Good morning. Welcome to 2023 and the AO International New Hire Class 22.018. How are we doing this morning? Awesome. Good. You're doing good. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Good morning. I'm just going to tell you that's a failure. No, that, that's not going to work for me. I know we're tired. I know we had New Year's. I know we had the holidays. It is not that hard to get into sync and pretend and pretend like you're happy to see me. Can we try just one more time, please? Art, are you okay if I try this one more time? Let's do Good it. Morning. All right. Well, well, no, I have to have the intro. Hold on. You guys are killing oh, me. Oh, my bad. My bad. Yeah, for, one week away and we totally forget everything. All right, <laughs> here we go. Welcome AO International New Hire Class 22-018. It is the second day of 2023. How are we doing this morning? Great. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Now that will get me through at least today. At least today. <laughs> All right, who do we got here? We got David, we got Alan, we got Art, Nick, Daniel, Carlos with his camera not on, Aurora, Samantha, Brianna, Dante, Bree, I'll get it right, Kelsey, Paige, Grant, Adam, Johnny, Michelle, Maricela, Jordan, Nak Nakia, hey, I got that one right, uh, Samantha Watson, Dominic, Gappy, and Charles Lattimore. We've got 24 people here. <clears throat> and Charles says, I'm in bed sick. <laughs> hey, Charles, yeah. <clears throat> if you are sick and you can't sit through it, don't worry about it. You're going to have the video later tonight. And you can take a look at it. Uh, for anybody else so that isn't sick, let's make sure those cameras are on so I can see all of you. And I think someone sent me an email before saying they wouldn't have their camera on. But hey, no worries. So let's walk through it. Let's talk to Aurora. Aurora, are you there? What's up? What's happening? How was your holiday? Um, honestly, it could have been better. Like it started out good, but then New Year's Eve, I found out that I lost a really good friend of mine in a car accident. So, I mean, that was horrible. But other than that, everything was okay. Well, I'm sure I can speak for all of us that we are sorry for your loss. And if there's anything we can do to help you through it, you let us know, okay? All right, Bree. Bree with a big smile. Come on, Bree. Hello. How was your holiday break? Uh, not bad. Got lots of food and got to spend some time with some family, so. Uh-huh, and where was family at? Was that... Where you live is that somewhere else? Yeah, just where I live here, here in here in town. So, in Michigan. Okay, was that for just Christmas, or was that for the New Year's as well? Uh, we didn't really do anything for New Year's. We just watched the special on TV, and <laughs> that's pretty much it. We did make it to midnight though. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Did you watch Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus? Did you watch Don Lemon, or did you watch uh, who's the other guy on ABC? I forget his name. Um. Yeah, uh, uh, Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest, there you go. Mm -hmm. Been there forever. Grant, Grant, how are you? How was your break? It was pretty good. How about you? It was good. What'd you do over the break? I uh, just pretty much chilled out with my friends at Christmas and my family. Okay, there you go. That's good. Did anybody get affected by the winter weather? Anybody impacted in a negative way? No, everyone was good. A little bit. Good. Oh, a little bit. Who is that? Dante. What we happened? Some, uh, frozen pipes. Our water was down for a couple of days. Yikes. Frozen pipes are not good. Yeah. And then, Nick, your hand was raised. What happened with you? Oh, we got snowed in, so I couldn't go out for Christmas. We just had to uh, stay where we were. Where Where was that? Uh, I'm in Michigan, but uh, I couldn't go out to like see family and such. Gotcha. All right, everybody, I put the link for the DRB report in there. What I'm looking for is any calls that you made over the holiday break, including Friday of last, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. So the last day we were together, if you made any calls with your upline or did anything like that, and then over this week break, did any of you watch any presentations? Did you uh, make any phone calls? Anything like that? 
that's what I'm looking for, okay? So you want the week before and last week activity? Well, I want or last week's activity and then the Friday before. So if after our last day on class, if you did anything on that Friday with your upline, I want to know about it, okay? Um, if we did any practice like presentations, because Ashley wanted us to do practice presentations, should we put that in like the calls or anything? Or when you say a practice presentation, did you make it with a client? Um, not with like a client, but like I practice with like family and a couple of friends. No, no, because the presentations are what we're counting there is the actual number of times you either observed or sat with an actual client. We expect you to practice a lot as much as you can <clears throat> in order to get yourself ready and prepared for your release rubric, but uh, it doesn't count for the number of presentations you've observed. Did anybody observe any presentations last week? A few of you, I see a few nods. Okay, great, great, that's awesome. All right, awesome, glad to hear it. So let's make sure that that's reflected in the numbers. So who do we got here? We we don't have as many people as we normally have, but that's okay. Is there any <clears throat> is there anybody in this class that wasn't here for the first week of class? Alan, I see your hand raised. Were you in my class before, Alan? No, I, I, I'm working with uh, Troy Plummer directly. I'm a 37 year veteran in the insurance business. So we're, we're, oh, on, okay. we're on a different path. I watched all of you. So. Okay. Yeah. I knew there was going to be <clears throat> pardon me, one or two people <clears throat> who uh, were going to have to sit in for the first week of class or the first day of the second week of class. He didn't sound, well, that's fine. Michelle Lane, talk to me. How was your vacation? Uh, Christmas was nice, uh, quiet, lots of food. I was exhausted from all the cooking for days, but um, New Year's, uh, I guess, pretty good. I stayed up until five in the morning. I don't know who I think I am. <laughs> I'm not 20 <laughs> years old anymore. <laughs> well, do you have a large family? Is that what was going on for Christmas? No, no, I don't have a large family. Uh, Christmas was fairly quiet. I just was with my um best friend at her house and her husband and I was originally going to be the designated driver to go pick up all the girls but that ended up folding and I don't know we just watched the Ryan Seacrest and then just kept having fun and talking and talking I'm like oh my gosh it's five in the morning I need to go to bed so. nice kept the party going that's awesome good for you all right, uh, so let's go back to Alan. Alan, there's a link there. What I want you to do is fill that out and just put zeros uh, for everything. And then starting today, theoretically, you'd be working with your upline to either observe presentations. The DRB stands for dials, the number of outbound dials you make to clients, um, and the number of books, right? Uh, appointments, uh, the number of people who picked up and you talked to, number of presentations that you've observed, and the number of sales, which would mean uh, all the way through the process of using DocuSign to get a sale. And if you have none today, it's totally fine at zeros, but theoretically starting this evening, or maybe tomorrow, he would start observing those, okay? All right. All right, Arsom, Maricela, how are we doing today? Oh my I'm gosh. doing good, how are you? Oh, good. I'm like, did you forget how to use the mute button? What's going on? No. <laughs> no, you got that. You're you're good, right? Okay, so it's been a week. I want us to rewatch that video one more time uh, about our market because I want to make sure that everybody kind of remembers what we're doing inside the veteran market. I will give you guys a little bit of information. Uh, this theoretically, the hold on one second. This theoretically will be the last class where we only talk about the veteran market. Moving forward, we're going to talk about other markets and I'll start including uh, additional markets such as the union, credit union, POS, which is policy and servicing, uh, and uh, a hard card, which you guys don't have to do in this particular class. What all that means is you all are specifically brought in to work union lead, I'm sorry, veteran leads. And we've talked about that last week, what that kind of means the week before, the first week of class. 
However, as you begin to recruit people, you may not necessarily limit them to only veteran leads. You may decide with your upline that you want to put them under uh, different markets like credit union or union or you know any of the other type of leads that we have like McGruff, uh, things like that. So starting with the next class, we will begin to incorporate all those additional uh, markets in our discussion. And what that means for you is as you recruit, you don't need to worry about sending somebody to any particular new hire course. The new hire course will be revamped to cover all the different markets that we have out there. Okay. So right now, like a lot of people are holding back, sending people to this class because they don't have uh, veteran leads. They have either union leads or McGruff. Uh, for you all in the future, you can just send your recruits directly to this course. Any questions about that? Nope. Okay, so we're going to watch this uh, video again with um, the executive director of PR, Andrew Haskins. The veteran market module is intended to give you a clear picture of the clients that you'll be servicing and the organizations that they belong to. So here's what you need to take away from this module. Number one. What defines a veteran and what are they covered for and entitled to through the VA? Number two, what a veteran service organization is. And number three, how do we market to veterans? A veteran by statute is defined as a person who served in the active army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, and was discharged as other than dishonorable. Now, there's currently over 20.4 million veterans across the country making the veteran market almost one and a half times the size of the entire union market that the company began marketing to in the 50s. Our target senior demographic of veterans between the ages of 60 to 75 alone boasts more than 10 million or a little under half of the veteran population. What's more exciting than just the number of veterans that exist is the opportunity to protect each one of those veterans' families and close relations through the sponsorship program provided through AIL. Every veteran, not only in most cases, always knows another veteran, but also may have a brother or sister or a parent or a friend that they're able to extend their benefits to through AIL as well. You may be asking yourself with that many veterans, well, where are they all located at? Well, in Washington state, there's over 560,000 veterans. In Oregon, there's over 300,000. In California, has over 1.6 million, Arizona over 500,000, in Texas over 1.5 million, in Minnesota over 320,000, in Wisconsin over 360,000, Virginia over 720,000, North Carolina over 730,000, Tennessee over 470,000, and that's not even all the territories that we cover and service veterans in. What an incredible opportunity that you have to work in this special market. Now, to put this in perspective for how big your opportunity is, let's take a state like Washington. It has over 560,000 veterans, with 397 of those being between the ages of 20 to 69 or 71%. It would take 25 agents averaging 12 presentations per week or 300 presentations in total. It would take those 25 agents almost 39 years to see every veteran and their family in Washington. Now that's just one state with 25 agents and you have access and the exclusive NAO to the whole country. Now, if that's not opportunity unlimited, I don't know what is. Now let's talk about what they're covered for. Burial in a VA National Cemetery includes an assigned grave site if space is available, opening and closing of the grave, grave liner for casket remains, headstone or marker, and finally, care at no cost to the family. Now, the easiest way to understand that is everything before the cemetery gates, the veteran and their family is responsible to take care of. If they're buried in a state or national cemetery, the VA will take care of everything past the cemetery gate. Now, the US Department of Veteran Affairs benefits does not cover all of the funeral or cremation arrangements of honorably discharged veterans. They get up to $300 for a burial allowance if at the time of death, they were entitled to receive a pension. They receive up to $762 for a burial allowance if the death occurs in a VA facility, up to $762 for a burial allowance if they're burial in a cemetery, 
is not under U.S. governmental jurisdiction, discharged from active duty because of a disability incurred in the line of duty, or they die in a VA facility. Up to 2,000 for service-related deaths, and veterans' caskets are not free unless the death occurs while on active duty. Now, I know if you're like me, you feel the same way that I do. That's just not enough to take care of their funeral or final expenses for them, let alone their families. But that is where you come in. And your ability to complete this training effectively will be crucial to helping and educate and protect our nation's veterans. If you happen to encounter an active duty veteran member or spouse, it's important to know what life insurance they are covered for. It's called SGLI, or Service Members Group Life Insurance. Every active duty member is covered for $400,000 of term life insurance for the period of active duty and for an additional 120 days after separation or release from duty. Now, SGLI can be converted to VGLI, or Veterans Group Life Insurance, for up to the full 400,000 of renewable term life insurance if full-time SGLI was in place when they separated. If the veteran applies for VGLI within 240 days of separating, they don't have to qualify medically. Outside of that, they have a year and 120 days to apply and qualify medically. Otherwise, VGLI is not available to the veteran. Now, please review the module materials to see the details and the rates and coverages for VGLI and so that you can get the facts and utilize them throughout the presentation, which you'll see in later modules. Now that you know what defines a veteran and how many they are and what they're covered for, let's talk about the organizations that support them. The groups that we work with and also service veterans are called VSOs or Veteran Service Organizations. The three major VSOs are the American Legion, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and finally, the AMVETS, totaling over 3.85 million members across the U.S. Now, once you know the structure of one of them, you know the structure for all of them. So we're going to focus on the VFW, which is the second largest of the big three VSOs, with 1.6 million members. Now, the VFW represents combat veterans that had boots on the ground overseas for more than 30 days. Along with the VFW, there's an auxiliary to that organization. Now, these auxiliary members are not actual veterans themselves. And in many cases, they are the wives or husbands, sons or daughters of a veteran. The auxiliary's purpose is to help support and transition veterans back into civilian life once they've separated from service. Spouses, dependents, and survivors are eligible for a presidential memorial certificate a burial flag, and surviving spouses and children, they may be eligible for burial in a national cemetery, even if they pre-deceased the veteran. For the most up-to-date figures and numbers, be sure to visit www.cem.va.gov. To give you a better picture of VSOs and their impact, let's check out a video that shows what happened in the VFW organization in recent years. The VFW's 121st year was marked by challenges like none we have seen before, yet we did not falter. The call for help was unrelenting, and our members remained determined to serve during a time of great need. On July 24, 2020, Hal Roche II was installed as National Commander-in-Chief during a change of command ceremony at VFW National Headquarters. A U.S. Air Force veteran who served in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Commander Roche understood the value of resolve, resilience, and adapting to the situation at hand. All things he commended BFW members for as they stepped up to help during the COVID-19 crisis. In casting his 2020 vision for veterans, Commander Roche called on each of us to stay committed to the VFW's mission and continue growing membership in the nation's largest combat veterans organization. As the pandemic created or heightened hardships, the VFW found new ways to accomplish that mission. Limited in-person interaction moved more opportunities online 
through events such as the Facebook Live discussion with U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs officials on resources for veterans facing homelessness, and a live virtual chat with Medal of Honor recipient Thomas Paine. We even launched Still Serving, the VFW podcast, as one more way to connect with our communities and highlight critical issues and legislation affecting veterans, service members, and military families worldwide. And we've stayed on top of threats to veterans' benefits, such as the rise of VA claim sharks. These unaccredited companies make unrealistic promises regarding help with VA claims, and they keep a portion of a veteran's disability compensation as payment for assistance that accredited VFW service officers provide at absolutely no charge to the veteran. VFW posts and members also adapted to life in the pandemic by holding virtual events, along with safely serving fellow veterans and their communities. At every level of the organization, service and camaraderie have illustrated that the VFW is a lifeline for veterans, their families, and communities. Primarily through virtual meetings, the VFW persevered on the front lines of vital legislative battles on Capitol Hill. Nothing stopped us from fighting for education, jobs, health care, and better quality of life for veterans as we made the voices of our members heard. The VFW proposed the Digital GI Bill upgrade to bring VA education services into the 21st century. This would improve veterans' access to timely and accurate processing as they complete an education. We also pushed for more assistance for service-disabled veterans and those facing housing issues, reflecting our desire to see all veterans secure employment and economic opportunities. The VFW advocated for more progress in healthcare for women veterans, including continued needs to eliminate harassment and assault and address a lack of facilities and providers for gender-specific services. The VFW expressed support for HR 344, the Women Veterans Transitional Residents Utilizing Support and Treatment Trust Act, which would identify the need for women-specific drug and alcohol dependency treatment and rehabilitation programs through VA. VFW service officers remain steadfast in their efforts to secure the benefits and compensation America's veterans earned and deserve. Our accredited VFW service officers and VFW National Veterans Service set another fiscal year record, recovering more than $9.7 billion in VA disability compensation benefits for nearly 550,000 veterans. One of the most urgent concerns for the VFW was toxic exposures. Men and women who've worn our nation's uniform and served in dangerous environments need the care and benefits America promised. They've sacrificed, but too many have been left to suffer as they waited years or decades for benefits, or worse yet, were denied care. Commander Roche demanded Congress take action during the first ever all virtual testimony before the House and Senate committees on Veterans Affairs. He provided a plan that would establish an independent commission to identify toxic exposures and environmental hazards, evaluate scientific evidence on health conditions and toxic exposures, and obligate the VA to accept toxic exposure claims for the sake of veteran care, regardless of the cost. Toxic exposure for our troops has been synonymous with service for more than a hundred years. But every time we're faced with it, we act as, it's never, as if it's never happened before. A comprehensive system for taking care of our troops exposed to hazards is long past due. The VFW demands that Congress works in a bipartisan manner with the veteran service organizations to develop a comprehensive solution for toxic exposure. We must create a framework that will take care of all past, present, and future generations of veterans. Again, that is long overdue. Right now, the burden of proof falls too heavily on veterans. A new framework to determine presumptive service connection is necessary. The VFW continues to urge Congress to pass reforms. We emphatically support the Comprehensive and Overdue Support for Troops Cost of War Act and the Honoring Our Pact Act currently under consideration. The lives of veterans are at stake. 
These advocacy efforts reflected the VFW's 2021 priority goals and the legislative battles that must be won for veterans and their families. The VFW provided several artifacts and personal effects to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency as part of its promise to help advance POW MIA missions. B.J. Lawrence, Executive Director, VFW Washington Office, met with DPAA Director Kelly McKay to hand over items from VFW members. Shortly after, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper delivered several of these items to the Vietnamese government as a show of goodwill from the U.S. The VFW Foundation proudly celebrated its 25th anniversary. To mark the occasion, the city of Kansas City, Missouri presented Resolution 25, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Foundation Day Resolution. VFW Foundation Board Secretary Treasurer and VFW Quartermaster General Deborah Anderson and other representatives attended the virtual meeting to accept the resolution. With the generous support of our wonderful and loyal corporate partners, the VFW made a positive difference for Americans of every generation. Patriotic middle and high school students received more than $208,000 in scholarships and awards as the VFW named the national winners of its 2021 Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen competitions. The VFW hosted its first ever virtual parade of winners live on Facebook. The event, sponsored by Twisted X, recognized all state winners of the Voice of Democracy competition, as well as the National Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen winners. VFW National Commander Hal Roche, VFW Auxiliary President Sandy Onstwetter, and Twisted X President Kassad Reddy traveled to Rochester, Minnesota to present 2021 National Voice of Democracy winner Erin Grace Stoke with the first place $30,000 T.C. Selman Memorial Scholarship Award. Sponsored by VFW Post 1215 in Rochester and its auxiliary, her winning essay on this year's theme, Is This the Country the Founders Envisioned, inspired us to share in a vision of progress that is passed on to future generations. Today, almost 80% of the U.S. population is eligible to vote, and our union is far more perfect for it. But what about that last 20%? Who is left? The children. Your children. Because you, just as the founding fathers and ships full of immigrants before you, are tasked with protecting the future. In addition to a college scholarship, the VFW surprised all of the Voice of Democracy state winners when it announced they would also receive a new laptop, courtesy of Dell. Also featured during the virtual award ceremony was the 2021 Patriots Pen first place winner, Wyatt Perkins. Sponsored by VFW Post 4221 in Lake Portland, North Dakota, Perkins was awarded $5,000. He delivered his winning essay on the theme, what is patriotism to me? And discussed how he raised donations for a local food pantry to help during the pandemic. 158 student veterans from around the country were named recipients of the VFW's Sport Clips Help a Hero Scholarship for the fall 2020 semester. Another 160 student veterans were awarded scholarships for the spring 2021 semester. Together, these groups received nearly $1.4 million in assistance. In addition, the VFW and Sport Clips Haircuts teamed up for the first ever virtual VFW Sport Clips Help a Hero Walk, offering supporters a new way to engage with the Help a Hero campaign. It was a huge success and raised just over the $1 million goal. Today, $8 million in scholarships have been awarded through this program. The VFW is grateful for Sport Clips' ongoing support for veterans' higher education needs. The pandemic couldn't stop 300 Burger King franchisees from raising critical funds for the VFW's Unmet Needs Program. In the 14th year for the campaign, participating restaurants asked customers to donate to the program with their purchase and help prevent circumstances such as hunger and homelessness. Since 2007, Burger King franchisees have raised more than $6 million for this vital program. To date, Unmet Needs has awarded more than $12 million to nearly 11,000 service members, veterans, and their families 
since 2004. Ace Hardware collaborated with the VFW again to give away 1 million American flags to honor men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Customers who visited a participating Ace store received a free American flag. A second flag was then donated to a local VFW post to be used for decorating veterans' graves on Memorial Day. The VFW joined forces with Team Red, White, and Blue. This opened the door for organizing more virtual and local opportunities aimed at connecting veterans through physical wellness and social activities. Some things changed due to COVID-19, but the VFW's enduring spirit of service did not. It was on display as members helped fellow veterans and their communities. The Still Serving campaign, which began right before the pandemic, took on deeper significance as it became a vehicle to share the ways veterans rose to the challenges at hand. VFW posts and members conducted buddy checks, food and blood drives, PPE distributions, and much more in the face of this invisible enemy. After a year filled with difficulties, the VFW and its membership emerged stronger than ever. Just as we have for more than a century, we stayed true to our mission relentlessly fought for veterans to get the benefits they earned and deserved and brought hope to people across the country. We demonstrated that we never give up and that veterans represent the best of America. We are still serving. We are resilient. And we are proud to say we are the veterans of foreign wars and no one does more for veterans. Wow, what an amazing organization to partner with on the state level to educate and protect our nation's veterans. Now that you have the understanding of what a veteran is covered for and entitled to, as well as what a veteran service organization's role is, now let's explore the marketing and mailing process. Let's start with AIL's process. The marketing process to a veteran service organization is the same as how unions and other associations are marketed to. An AIL public relations representative will reach out to a VSO's leadership, such as a quartermaster, a state adjutant, or a commander. Once a virtual or in-person meeting is scheduled, an initial explanation of what AIL can offer the group's leadership is presented. Once the decision maker is on board, they are presented it to their board and get final approval. Once approved, a contract between the group or what's called a TG is signed and a coverage amount is put in place on all members. A letter and a beneficiary reply card is created, and the decision maker's signature is put on the final artwork and letter. Once everything is finalized, the entire membership is mailed. The response cards are received by home office, and they are data entered. They are then routed to AO and loaded into our system for you to call on. Now, that marketing process I just described built the company since 1951 and has continued to provide resources to associates to this day. But innovation is what drives AO. And AO partnered with a company called Lead Lab to bolster and support growth. This marketing process takes the best practices of what the company has been doing since 1951 and then applies it to current technology and goes straight to the veterans through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, allowing veterans that don't belong to veteran service organizations to get access to the same benefits. Once a veteran responds uh, to one of the social media platforms for a no-cost burial and will kit for veterans and their families, they are sent two emails. One, a confirmation email, and the other, an email informing them of an agent of American Income Life will be reaching out to them. The amazing part of this marketing process is that all veterans are covered for the same benefits. So whether you see them through a VSO like the VFW or you see them through an online response through the lead lab, our products and services will always make sense for every veteran family you see. You know, this market is special and unique and you should want to hold yourself to the highest level of professionalism to give the veterans and the families you service the best possible experience. Your knowledge of veteran issues as well as coverages is so important to connecting with veterans virtually. 
Now, be sure to watch this video as many times as you need to solidify what you've learned and get the most out of your training. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Alan, did you get my uh, message? Yeah, I already sent it back to you. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I, I don't see when the response goes in, but thank you. I appreciate that. All right, everybody. So we got that done. Let's talk about the presentations that I was actually able to review over uh, the break. Uh, David, you you sent me your uh, audio file only, and you followed up with the actual uh, the actual. Uh, yes, sir. Did, that, did the video come through this time? Yeah, I saw it, so I won't okay. get to that. My apologies, sir. That was an error on my end. No, no that's all. It's fine. Uh, let's go through and look at what we got for folks, because I want to talk about it a little bit. So if you guys can bring up the email that I sent you, that would be appreciated. Let's see if I can get it to come out here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, Adam, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just saw the email you sent this morning about the um, the, the uh, presentations we sent you, and uh -huh. that you said that I sent you because I know I sent you two. I don't know how to split them up on Zoom. So if you watch the first video for like the first minute, and then I where I forgot to put the camera on, um, <laughs> yeah. And when and when it ended, if you hit play again, it plays the second video where I actually turned the camera off and did the whole presentation. Oh yeah, I didn't hit play again. I just saw it ended and that was it. So I can go yeah. back and look. That would be fun. I'll do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Why is this not working for me? What is going on? What is happening here? What is happening? So that's really bizarre. Uh, all right, so we're going to try to do it a different way since I can't do that. What is the deal here? Wow, that is really, really bizarre. All right, so let's... Uh, I'll just try to show my screen in a different way because it doesn't want to cooperate. I really love it when that happens. Okay, so let's share the screen and let's share that. All right, can everybody see my screen? Yes, you can. All right, so here's the feedback. So what I look at and what I teach and what I talk about with my own teams throughout my entire career, regardless of whether it was in this market or any other type of market in Silicon Valley, I always wanted to make sure that I talk about cadence, tonality, or in rapport. Those are the first three things that are absolutely critical when you're engaged in discussions, whether it's a B2B or business-to-business -business play, or whether it's a business-to-consumer play. So what I'm looking for is, you know, did we have good pacing throughout the entire presentation, or did we just read the thing just to get it over with? You know, you were supposed to role play. Did you have tonality? So at certain times in the presentation, you should be a little more serious, maybe sound a little more on point, maybe slow down. Keep in mind, the majority of folks in this market are going to be anywhere from 55 and up. So you are going to deal with people who are going to require you to slow down because they can't hear uh, as well as maybe some of the younger folks. And then from a rapport standpoint, I want to know, did we attempt to build rapport? I think there's one person that I watched that there was no rapport, just started right with the presentation. So we need to build the rapport, even if we're uh, role playing, or even if we're not role playing, but we're just talking into the camera. And what I've learned from all of this now is that I can't let people just talk into the camera. You're going to have to role play with somebody, uh, not for this class, but all future class, because it's more effective for you to have that type of conversation and show me that you can actually build rapport to any extent if you actually have somebody responding to you. Then we're looking for your camera. Did you turn your camera off at the appropriate time or did you leave it on through the entire thing? And remember, you may be watching presentations of tenured agents who leave their camera on, which is completely fine. Once you get out of class, you can do that if you want. 
But what we've learned is if you turn your camera off and you don't know the script that well, it doesn't hurt you as much as if you leave the camera on the entire time and then you're looking off to the side reading the script. You're not building a very good rapport. If you don't build rapport, you can't instill trust and trust is key in this business. HP Pro, did you actually use HP Pro for the presentation? Role-playing, did you role-play? So even if you're talking to a camera by yourself or just talking to me, did you act as if it was a role-play? Uh, Check-in and tie-downs. What I want to know is, did you routinely check in with the client or with the role play and say, how does that make sense? How does that sound? Do you have any questions? Those type of things. In the script, there are specific areas we want you to tie down, but we're also looking for you to uh, initiate that on your own. Did you even follow the script? <laughs> You'd be surprised that I've had folks who don't even follow the script for whatever reason. So that's important. And then how did you handle referrals and sponsorships? And did you actually send me the PDF of the Family Information Guide and Burial Benefits. Those are the things I look for for the A1 through A5. The thought process there is if you can get through that and do that effectively, you've got a really good shot of getting the rest of it done. Efficacy, effectiveness, and efficiency. So the one thing I don't look for in this class is efficiency because it doesn't matter to me how long it takes you to get through uh, practice of the training, whether you're sending me a video, whether you're working with each other, it doesn't matter. You'll find very quickly that when you use HP Pro, HP Pro will tell you how long you spend in every one of the sections. And if you're spending two and a half hours with somebody, you're going to get pretty frustrated, right? And they're going to get frustrated as well. So what you'll find is that as time goes on and you practice more and more, your efficiency will get better and better. What I'm looking for is efficacy and effectiveness. Efficacy in the sense, can you actually do it, right? And then effectiveness, how well did you perform in doing it correctly, right? So just because I can swing the bat and hit the ball doesn't mean I'm a very effective hitter. It just means I can do it. Effectiveness means how well you do it, how often you do it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, as far as call outs for this uh, group of videos that I reviewed, uh, everyone did pretty well for the first run through for the A1 through A5. Uh, if you are in a situation where there is a spouse what I want you to ask is if something happens to both of you, who's going to be your main point of contact that you want notified immediately? What we don't want to see is having the spouse be replicated in the main point of contact uh, in the family information guide because you've already done it once for the spouse. If you replicate it, you're just losing that additional person for a sponsorship, right? Uh, only show page one of the group letter. Page two is going to be used when we transition to the needs analysis. Okay, so only show page one. If you show page two, what we found is that a lot of members will start asking questions about what that page two means. And now you're going to be out of sync with where you want to be with the script. It's not the end of the world. It's just what we've seen. It's more effective for you to only show page one and then show page two when we get to the needs analysis. There are a lot of phrases that we tend to use <clears throat> in our vernacular when we're talking with people in person because we use a lot of facial expressions that convey uh, communication as well. <clears throat> but a lot of you use um and transition or transitory phrases like um, like, okay. And that's fine when you're having a conversation with me on video, but the moment that you turn your video off and all I'm doing is listening to you, it becomes very, very repetitive. Is anybody aware that they do that? Anybody want to admit? David Carr says he does it. Anybody else? Johnny says he does it. Brianna, Dante. Right. So the issue there is not to effectuate change immediately. No one expects you to do that. Because that's could be pretty impressive if you can. What I want you to do uh, is to be aware that you do it. Watch yourself in the recording. Watch other people. Watch the presentations that you're required to observe for the rest of this week. And you're going to see people do that. Note that if you can just take that out of your pattern, you'll be a much more effective public speaker. Folks who want to speak publicly, whether they're in sales, whether they're just giving speeches or whatever, if they use those transitory phrases, what they're really doing is they're connecting thoughts and trying to cover empty spaces, right? So a lot of times people will say something and they'll go, um, and they'll go to the next thing. Not because they want to say the word, um, but that's their connecting phrase. 
if you say that too much, it becomes a detraction and a distraction. Not just a detraction, but a distraction. And once you start getting your clients distracted from having a conversation with you, when you get to more serious things like the closing question, you may not have built up the rapport that you're looking for and the trust in order to get the sale at the highest level that you want. It doesn't mean that you won't sell. It just means you could be better. Does that make sense to everybody? And Grant, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So in the family information guide, there is the floppy disk. I would say half of you did not click on the floppy disk until the end. And then you saved it by downloading the PDF file and sending it to me. That's great. But I have seen countless times where agents, not students, agents forget to click on that floppy disk. <clears throat> and for some reason, something goes haywire in their presentation and they have to bring it back. And what they'll do is they'll bring up the PDF file again. Maybe HP Pro gets corrupted and they need to reload it. They'll bring up the HP program, they'll bring up the family information guide, but none of the information was saved. What ends up happening then is the agent has to make a decision. Do I ask for all these questions again and all these people, or do I just skip it? And Aurora, what do you think happens more often than not? Um, people probably end up skipping it. Yeah. People skip it because they, they don't want to ask the same questions all over again. So to ensure that doesn't happen to you, if you hit the floppy disk, it'll say that even if HP Pro crashes, I've seen it where it comes back up, the uh, guide will be populated with the information you get saved. That's why I make it very key that you click on that. And then uh, at the end, rather than ask, you know, who else do you want to add? Or is there anyone else you want to add? Don't do that. Be a something and say, who's next? Who's next? Right? I think I saw Michelle do hers and she actually added a fourth person. So we know we need three family members. We need three emergency contacts and two veterans, right? Well, I saw her actually click on the little plus symbol and add another one and actually get four people in the family. Yes, Adam. Um, yeah, so I had a question about the end of that presentation when you got to um, the witnesses for the um, the notary, notarization. Um, are we supposed to record those names too as referrals or um, how is that supposed to work? Yeah, I do. So we added that in there so you can get a two additional people because we make it clear that they're not two of the people who are going to benefit from the will, which typically won't be two of the people in there. So if they give you Johnny or whatever... I just make a notation for that. And when I go to the uh, the sponsorship tool, I then add them in there directly. And then I say, oh, by the way, what state and what's their phone number? So you get two additional folks, All right? So the goal is to get three, three and two, so that's eight. Hopefully you can get two additional through the will kit and then any others for any other uh, folks that they wanna sponsor. And remember what I said about getting those referrals. I do that from the moment I start having a conversation until the last minute when I click end on the Zoom call. I'm looking to get any additional folks that I can. So that process should never stop. Did that answer your question, Adam? Yes, it did. Thank you. Okay, awesome. So uh, down here, I'm not going to go through everyone's call outs. You have them there. If your name is not listed, what that means is that I did not receive your uh, submission before uh, the cutoff time. And when was the cutoff time, Marvin? Do you remember? December 28th. Right. So that Wednesday, right? <clears throat> so if I received it after that Wednesday or whatever the case may be, then I did not look at it. It doesn't mean that I didn't get it. It just means I didn't look at it. So for any of you that, who's not listed on here, you need to send me that again, because I probably don't have those emails anymore. Or I get so many, I'm not going to go search through all of them. And I will look at your videos tonight, because if I don't have them by tonight, then you're going to spend the class time tomorrow actually doing the videos with each other. Okay, because those have to be done. And when you send them, you can send them to me as well as your upline. And it's really for the benefit of your upline to know that you're doing it. I don't expect them to provide any uh, feedback on it. They can if they want, but I my commitment to you is that I'll provide the feedback. Are there any questions about the comments I made for anybody in this uh, feedback email that I sent you? 
have a yes. question. Oh. I just had a question, but, uh, do me a favor, everybody, if you remember to electronically raise your hand, because then I can see immediately who has a question. Just letting you guys know if you remember how to do it. But Johnny, go ahead. Thank you. Um, do I have to re? I, I just sent you my video, like um, I think it was a Saturday. Should I resend it to you? Yeah, you should resend it as today because what I'll do is I'll filter my emails just from today only, and then I'm looking for that. So if you've already sent it in, just resend it to me so it shows up today. You don't have to redo it. You'll be fine. Yes, Kayla. So I sent it to you before the cutoff time. Um, do I just need to redo it again? You don't have to redo it. You just resend it to me. Okay, because I, I sent it to you, I want to say, on on before we were out for the week. Like, I sent it on Friday. Yeah, just resend it to me. It means I probably missed it. I'm not okay. perfect. And remember, perfect. this isn't going to be something where it's, like, held against you. You're not being graded. No I worries. Make, I check everybody's stuff. Yes, Dante. Um, so if we didn't get an email from you, that means you did not receive our video. Well, I sent the email to everybody on the list. I only included the folks. I didn't get that. Class. What's your email address, Dante? Um, Dante Reeves at AIL at Gmail. Oh, I see it right there. On the list. Dante Reeves AIL at gmail.com, right? Yes. So, what yeah, was that sent? What's that? What day was that sent? I sent it this morning. Oh, okay. I think I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So, does anybody who I provided comments on have any questions about those comments? Okay. You got mine. Okay. Good. No one, no comments. Okay, so anybody who has not on that list, I need to have an email from you uh, today so that I can review your stuff tonight, okay? All right, let's go to Michelle Lane. Michelle Lane, what are we doing this morning? Or today, I guess. Some of us aren't in the morning. Oh, I know I gotta pull it up. I don't have it pulled up yet. Oh my goodness, here we go. <laughs> Up and down the keys and done it again, and it looks like it's foaming. But could this elephant really be swollen? When you look at it at first, it looks like it's a point of a cigarette or something. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Oops, I pulled up the wrong thing. Oh. New no. hire agent packet, right? Sure. You can I definitely that. take a look at that. That would probably be helpful. There we go. I'm sorry. I'm trying to put out a fire in my real estate that popped up oh okay is there anybody else who knows what we're going to do today i've got it give me just a second it's right here okay monday go we are going to uh day six week two we are going to role play section b read off letter what's the off letter uh well that's a phrase that's used when you're required to legally to read a letter in terms of oh, the process. just read off letter. Okay, pre-qualify the needs analysis, building a program, why we're taking talking about insurance, what is being provided. Also, section C, the emotional statement dealing with death, freedom mm -hmm. of choice, allocated amount, ADB, accidental death benefit, A71, monthly income, the income protection, and section D, transitioning to the close, assigning the beneficiary, and then the close. We'll role play section B, C, and D. Awesome. So we're going to be role playing, but we're going to go through the rest of the presentation. So on my screen, you should be seeing HB Pro, or at least the login. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're going to come here. We're going to click on demo. Actually, we're going to type in demo. We're going to then click on demo. We're going to change the state. In this case, we'll change it to California. We're also going to change the presentation type to veteran. 
and we're going to change the subtype to return card. The SG number is going to be SGMAD. And then we select SGMAD, and then that will automatically populate the group name. Everybody should be following along with me on their computer. Is there anybody who does not have access to HB Pro? Nope. Alan, do you have access to HB Pro? You do? Okay. Are you logged in here already? Oh, can't hear you. I, I'm not logged in this second, but I used it many times last week. Okay, awesome. Good. As long as everyone knows. Arel, Arel, where are you at, Arel? Do I see you? Arel, Arel. Okay, I don't see you, but I hear you. Arel, if you can hear me, are you able to log in to HP Pro? Or are you at work and you can't do it right now? Can't remember. I'm at a doctor's appointment. Okay, I got you, Jane. Working right now. Okay, so Arel, just follow along or listen in. And we'll, I'll try to remember that you can't participate. All right, so we're going to click on the presentation. When we click on the presentation, it comes up with all this good stuff. Let's go to Daniel Lynch. Daniel, according to this thing right here, I'm supposed to be in section B. How do I get there? How do I get to the readoff letter, Daniel? Um, let's see. Good question. Can say, that, say that again, the read-off letter? Yeah, how do I get to the read-off letter? Let's see, it must be one of these icons at the bottom. Nope. Um, nope. Okay. Group letter. Paige Roberts, how do I get to the read-off letter? You're going to click where it says group letter. Oh, okay. Yep. I know that is group letter. Yeah, yeah. It, that's right, Daniel. It is the group letter. We're going to click on that. And because we have the SGMAD, it's going to bring up the first page of the California VFW letter, right? It talks about the 4,000. The read-off letter is the second page. So what we do is just click right here and right. we get it to the second page. That is the read-off <clears throat> letter. Actually, let me bring up my colored cursor so that way. Uh, so we don't use tone needs analysis. Yeah. So we, when we, we, when we get here, we have to talk about this in section B. Okay. Okay. And who has the script up in uh, section B one? Anybody? <laughs> Rihanna Chavez, you're the winner. Winner chicken dinner. I want you to read section B1 for me. Okay, hang on, I'm scrolling there. <laughs> I love it. Okay. You said B1, right? That, that's correct. So are, are you tracking with me? You're looking at the PDF file, it says veteran presentation. I, I have it up if you want me to read it up. Yeah, I have it up on my phone. Um, okay. you want me to read through it then? Yeah, because we don't need to do A6 and A7 because all you're doing there is reading a bunch of text that I'm showing you here, right? I'm not interested in that. I want us, and we already talked about how to get additional sponsored veterans and referrals, correct? Correct. We talked about how to do that in the presentation tool. We're going over that one more time. But right here, I want you to read from... So right here, this whole thing. Got it. Okay. Okay, go. Obviously, the VA's 300 burial allowance isn't enough to take care of your funeral, let alone, let alone the final expenses like taxes, attorney's fees, and any medical, housing, or credit card left behind. So the VSOs asked us to read this letter to each veteran to back up and fill you in on everything they set up for you. And then I can't see the letter, hang on. Okay. Um, dear veterans, the insurance programs being offered to you today are made possible through the voluntary cooperation of veterans organizations and American Income Life. These coverages are supplemental in that they are not in competition with any coverages through the VA, work or elsewhere. 
If you qualify, these programs will last a lifetime and are under your independent control, meaning they're both permanent and portable. There are going to be several benefits made available. They ask that you take a few minutes to listen to the representative visiting with you. They have designed these benefits to fill areas of need. They suggest that you qualify to take advantage of these benefits today during your service period. Right, <clears throat> pardon me, so very good. <clears throat> the reason I want you to read that is because it doesn't mm -hmm. align with this letter here, does it? Right, yeah. <clears throat> and so here's what the issue is. We, we don't want you to do is read this letter. <clears throat> if we watched Andrew Haskins in his video, he read the entire thing. We don't want you to do that anymore because every letter is somewhat different for the various uh, VSOs. So every letter has a somewhat, <clears throat> there's going to be some variations because of the state that they're in and then with the VSO and then with the post, right? So if you're a VFW member, you belong to a certain post, they may have different language a little bit there. So what we've done is we said, okay, we just want one phrase. If you read this, that will be fine. You no longer have to read the entire letter because if you did, that's kind of a pain. You'll learn these words here and you'll be perfectly fine. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. We're only going to read this one right here. And then we're going to go down to the transition to the needs analysis. Because what we're going to do then is paraphrase this in B2, right? We're going to say, hey, what this is the thing is that after I show you all the benefits, explain how they work and answer any questions that you have and if you qualify, et cetera, et cetera. That language in there you can make it your own. You can read it exactly as it's written, or at least you can say what, you can paraphrase rather, what the previous paragraph talked about. Does that make sense? I want this to be a little more personal because you're connecting. Basically the way I do it, hey, now what that's saying is that after I show you the benefits, explain how they work and answer any questions that you have, because that's the way that I talk. I don't have any particular uh, preference in how you speak. I just want you to be able to transition so if you say this one verbatim right here, then this one, you can say whatever makes sense. Just to have to let them know that they're going to be filling out a report card when they're done. Everyone tracking with me so far? Okay, then you get to the B3, which is, hey, just because you're a veteran doesn't mean you automatically qualify or you can enroll in the benefits. Why do we do that, Adam? Why do we tell them you may not automatically qualify? Qualify. um because it gives them oh there goes the l word um uh, <laughs> because it gives them that desire to not be left out right and we talked about that last friday a little bit right jones effect <clears throat> look at kelsey smith bringing the thunder i love it thank you kelsey yeah it's the jones effect we want them to feel as if they want to be part of the group even if they don't want to buy initially the more you do this subtly right the more uh, opportunity that you may have to actually close them. Then we're going to ask the needs, uh, not the needs, we're going to ask the health questions. Those health questions, so let me do this here. So we've done this here. We've now read the letter. We've gotten through B2, right? So we're then going to close this, and then we're going to go down here to the needs analysis. And then I'm going to say, just because you're a veteran does not mean you automatically qualify or that you can enroll in the uh, benefits. You still have to qualify. If you're too high a risk, they can't let you in. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions first. The questions that you're asking first are over here, right? These are, and these aren't qualifying or non-qualifying questions. All these are, are for you to determine if you need to know something about them medically that potentially could disqualify them. So there is a difference. Right. When do I use senior versus super combo, Brianna Chavez? Um, senior are for sixty years old or older. That's correct. Sixty or older, I would click on senior. I'd ask these questions. You can see they're different, right? Now, in a senior, terminal illness on oxygen. If you've had cancer, if you have two years of a heart attack, any one of those three is a yes that person will not qualify, okay? That person will not qualify. The tobacco question of marijuana doesn't mean they won't qualify, it just means they will probably be, they'll get a higher rating, okay? If you use 
marijuana in any shape or form, you have to indicate that they use tobacco. Yes, don't they? So we would never use the pre-planning um, guide, right? When was that? When is that effective? The the pre-plan is that what yes. you're asking me? Yes. So you, you use pre-plan when uh, we're practicing. You use pre-plan if you know you're going to have a conversation with somebody, maybe in a couple of hours. You can pre-plan and kind of see what information you already know about them that you can add, and then you can load the pre-plan into the needs analysis, right? But more often than not, specific, uh, especially when you all first start, you won't use pre-plan. You will use the presentation and just flow it all the way through. As you get better and better what you're doing, you may decide you want to use pre-plan or, or not. It's up to you. But regardless, you got to get into the needs analysis, okay? All right, so going back to these questions, if one of these is yes, for any one of these people, that person will not qualify. Now, if it's a super combo, that's not the same thing. They can have prescription, they can have health issues, they can use marijuana, and they can have arrests. They may still qualify, but it's good for you to know about all this up front because if something jumps up at you, like, yeah, I was arrested and convicted of manslaughter. All right, you're not going to qualify because that's a felony, right? If I've had cancer in the last two years and it's internal cancer, I'm not going to qualify. Or I may have a level of cancer where I uh, am required to submit as a trial as opposed to a clean submittal. Does that make sense to everyone so far? Okay, so we have to answer these questions here. So let's assume for the sake of argument that it's going to be both husband and wife and they're going to be under the age of 60. So I'm going to ask, do you take prescription medications? If one of them says yes, what I want you to do is click on notes and then tell me they're taking, you know, as an example, metformin for diabetes. If I can spell diabetes correctly, right? These are notes for yourself. They don't go anywhere. They don't get recorded. They don't get saved. And they certainly don't make their way into eApp, which is the actual application that you're going to submit as a, for the policy. These are notes for yourself and yourself only. So you can then save that. Right, and if I come back to notes, there it is right there, okay? So you're gonna answer all these questions. Now you won't be able to get beyond this screen if you have not answered all these questions for the people that you have listed up here. Now, some of you, when you did your um, family information guide, you skipped uh, contact info and you put only the birthday, which is fine. The thing is, is you're gonna now have to enter it in here, okay? The other thing to consider is every single time you fill out the family information guide correctly and you then save it to your desktop because you're going to mail it at the conclusion of your presentation, you have a copy of all the information about that client. So if anything ever happens to your access to HP Pro or EF or something like that, you'll have the PDF file of every client that you've ever presented to. So it's really useful to fill that out. If you had filled that out, then this information would have been populated. Okay, if you haven't filled it out, then you do need to put this information in here. So let's say this person was born today, but back in 1970, right? And he is a minor and he is a male and test at gmail.com. Put any phone number that makes sense. And it's a good and Mary, 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 quite from sure, zero one, zero two, nineteen seventy one, and she's a teacher. Okay, so these have to be filled out unless there is no spouse. You can leave that blank. Now, do they have dependent children? If the answer is yes, you're going to click on yes and you're going to enter the children in here. If the answer is no, then you just like, no, you don't enter any children. Now it's asking about life insurance through work and outside of work. In the script, we talked about that already, right? We asked them, did you transition your SGLI to BGLI? And do you have any other things you can put in there? Put it in pencil or put it in pen, right? We've talked about that. So in this case, I'm just going to say no, but you have to enter in a number for each one of these sections. Otherwise, the system will kick it back. The same thing for life insurance outside of work, okay? And you're not using these to calculate anything other than understanding what they already have in terms of insurance 
versus those people who have no insurance. We'll talk a little bit about that more later, but in terms of what you're presenting to the client for a solution, we don't take any of this into account. Does everybody remember doing the plan options? Bronze, silver, gold, right? So there are the silver, gold, bronze. So there's no need for this, to for those calculations, but there is a need for you to be aware of what insurance they have if they tell you, hey, I already have $25,000 of whole life to cover you know, expenses for my funeral final cost but they have nothing put in place to cover their house, stuff like that. That's where this becomes important. Do you own or rent your house? If you put rent, it's going to ask you how much of it is. If you put own, it'll ask you how much it is. The difference is mortgage balance interest and years remaining will populate for a rental, right? Those are grayed out. So let's say this person rents and they're spending $2,000. You have insurance to pay off the home in case of death. It's not applicable in this case. And have you provided uh, education? Uh, funds, nope, not applicable. They don't have any children. Are they retired? Nope. They could be retired, just put yes or no. And then the income, right? The income here, we're going to say is on an hourly basis, he makes 25 and she makes 20. Okay. And we're using the dollar day approach. Would I ever use monthly or need or our power philosophy? Bria, Bria, Bria. <laughs> Would I ever use one of these other ones? Um, you could, I guess. Sure, you could use the hour power philosophy monthly or the need, but that doesn't align with your script, right? In the right. veteran market, talk about the dollar a day because the VSOs don't want it to be more expensive and bust your budget. So that's why we use the dollar a day, okay? We don't have to view coverage limits here because it's not applicable. All that's doing is telling you this is what they're, Combined income is for the year, we always multiply it by 10, and that shows the total insurance recommended. And then it will subtract out the existing life insurance that we pulled from here and here. I don't advise people to do that because then you get into conversation about how much insurance somebody should have, and I don't think we're ready to do that yet. You can have that conversation after you've made the presentation of what the VSO is recommending. If you have a lot of experience in insurance sales, you can certainly use this and talk about 8% as kind of the goal that people set aside for spending on a monthly basis to pay for their life insurance and then contrast that against how much insurance they actually have, how much they actually will need. But right now, for most of you, your new hires and going through the subtleties of that discussion is a little, not necessarily difficult. It's just, I want you to become proficient at presenting silver, gold, and bronze as a recommendation of the VSO. Okay goes to your personal recommendation, okay? So that is there for you. Do you bank locally for checking or saving? So they would say yes. Now, the expenses per month are useful uh, because that will tell you how much additional disposable income they potentially have. So let's say that they have, let's say 2,000 for rent, so let's say another 1,000, so they're spending 3,000 a month. So there you are. What should I put here, Michelle Lane, for John and Mary? Right there. What should I put? Uh, you're going to put $5. Right. We're going to go in the middle because the script talks about it's the recommendation from the VSOs. Okay. And we'll see that on the next screen. So now, once I have the checking selected there, what is the next thing I go to, Art? Uh, you go to the plan generator. So down here, I click on plan generator, it says fill in all the mandatory fields. Ah, yes, remember what I said, if these are not filled out, then what ends up happening is it won't let you move forward. So these all have to be filled out. Okay, so we're just gonna fill it in this way. Now we're gonna go to the plan generator. And now we come here and we all remember how this works, all right? So if I go through this quickly, I'm gonna change this one to the triple uh, family because it's a husband and wife. So triple family, I'm gonna leave those things alone. I'm gonna allocate remaining. I'm gonna allocate both. And then I'm gonna finish, which will then move him to 32 and her at 43. I'm gonna to go to the plan options. I'm going to add the additional two plans. I'm gonna rename this one to silver. I'm gonna, uh, silver, silver. I'm gonna rename the next one to gold. 
And then I'm going to rename the last one to bronze, right? And then here, once I do that, they show up silver, gold, and bronze. All it did was copy the exact same information for each one. So I need to go into each one and make a quick change. In this case, the gold, we're going to move that up to $8 a day. So the first thing I do is adjust my analysis approach to $8 a day to set an artificial budget. And then I'm going to move this one up to quintuple family. And now I'm going to allocate remaining. If I make any mistakes here, you guys let me know, okay? I'm going to click finish. So now the gold's at 46. And then I'm going to go to bronze. Make sure I'm showing bronze by having a gray there. I'm going to drop this down to double family. And I'm going to uh, change the bronze analysis approach to, what, three bucks a day, I guess. And, well, three dollars. And we're making them even simply because we want to set a baseline for the budget. And then I'm going to allocate remaining, allocate both, and then finish. And now I check 304, 46, 182. There's no relationship of these numbers to the previous screen where we talked about budget or we talked about how much insurance they wanted. And now I'm ready to go. Is that correct? Nikia, you have a question. What's happening? Okay, so now, and I don't know if you're going to go to this, and if you will, then I, you know, we can answer it then. But are there any cases when you would have a different dollar a day amount for John or Mary? Well, if we're following the script, learning how to do this, we want to present a silver, which is the recommendation from the VSOs, and we've got to, then we want to present, <laughs> we want to present a higher and then a lower. So the way that we do that is we, in the script, we talk about anywhere from zero, uh, anywhere from one to $10 a day with five being in the middle, which most people choose. Right. So meaning would there be a 450 for John and a five for Mary, a three for John, 350 for Mary, you know, something with those, would Ooh. there be cases of that? So the, the, the simple answer is yes, you could make certain cases to do that. However, I wouldn't do that because I want to establish their budget. Remember the whole process here of building these plans is to establish the budget. So we never ask the question right up front, how much money you have to spend on insurance because that defeats the entire purpose of what we're trying to do, right? So we say the VSO is recommended $5 a day, then we present the $5 a day. And then we ask the closing question, do you want to go with what's recommended by the VSOs or do you want to do like some people do and go for the enhanced program? At that point, we're now going to obtain their budget. Either they're going to go with what's recommended, go with what's higher, or tell you, I either can't afford it, it's too low or whatever. And then we ask the one simple question of, well, what makes sense for you and your family, right? At that point, if they tell me a number, I start making adjustments in here right? This will change, but I don't care anymore because I have a budget already set. I think what you're asking is at any point, do you, the agent go in here and make this change to a number other than what we're saying? Yes, you can, but it's not going to be helpful for you. It's more important to obtain the budget number from the client and then build the plan to that budget number without paying attention to the analysis approach. Does that make sense, Nakia? Yes, thank you. Okay, awesome. All right, so now we're here. Now we're ready to present. What's the next thing I'm going to click on? Aubrey Cole. Aubrey Cole. Um, I'm losing my spot. One second. No worries. I just lost my spot. It's okay. Kelsey Smith, what's the next thing I'm going to click on? Present plan. Oh, so close. So yeah. close. And now plan Kelsey's plan generator. Oh, plan generator. We're in the plan. Benefit summary. No. Plan generator. No. 
benefits. Uh, no, three lines. Three benefits. lines. Sorry. No, it is a little bit of a trick question. What am I looking at right now, Kelsey? What am I looking at? Which Bronze. plan am I looking at? Bronze. Which plan do I want to present? Gold. Silver. No. Silver. Silver, right? So if I were to do present plan, which you're almost right, but if I did that, the plan that's going to be presented is the wrong plan, oh. right? It's going to show me the lowest one. That's not the plan that I want to present. So Why would here, you do gold as the highest then? Because the script says the VSOs recommend the silver plan in the middle at $5 a day. Do you want to go with that one, Kelsey, or do you want to try to qualify for the enhanced program? And then you show the goal. Okay, got it. Right? So here, if I present, I'm sorry, if I click on uh, present plan, I'm presenting the wrong plan. So this is something that catches everybody. So you want to make sure you click on the silver plan so that this one aligns. So when I click present plan, I know now that I have the right plan presented because I'm at $300 a day. Okay. So now I've done that. I'm presenting the plan. We've practiced this. We've gone through this thing. What is the next thing I click on, Kelsey? Because I know you know the answer to this one. Freedom of choice. No. Well, when I presented the plan, and I, yeah, I, I skipped over that. So I, I'm assuming that we did that already. So yes, click on the freedom okay. of choice. One. So it's back. So she's right. Click on that. You reiterate that as well. Then you click off of that. Then you hit the down arrow. You go through a discussion of the text in the script all the way through here. Now, the next thing I click is what, Kelsey? The benefit summary. Uh, this one right here, actually, protection and writers. Oh. Yep. It's one, it's people forget about it. It's okay. Cash value, paid up benefits, and terminal illness writer. Remember what I told you? Do not click on cash value. Because if you do, it's not the end of the world. It's just that that example is an example only. It doesn't reflect the actual value that they would get. So you would have to explain that it's an example. So if you want to, that's fine. Most of your upline will not want you to click on that, okay? Same thing with paid up benefits. But what we do want you to click on is the terminal illness writer because that is straightforward. And you're just going to let them know that, hey, Terminal silver writer means that 50% uh, of the face value paid out anytime you get diagnosed with having less than a year to live. Then you can just escape or click off of that. Now, what's the next thing I click on, Kelsey? The next thing is going to be the, I don't know, benefits summary. Well, the be benefits so <laughs> yeah, we want to name a beneficiary. Remember what I told you? People will remember that big red bold number. They don't remember all of this. Did okay, so can't you get that number when you hit the benefit summary, though? Yes, you can. If you click on the benefit summary, the issue, though, is now you've got these other things already and you don't have a name in here. Right? So the whole idea is, is uh, yeah. you're going through, whoops, not this one. When you're going through display plan, you're talking about the one plan that you actually want them to buy. Remember, the top is pushing down, and theoretically, the bottom is pushing up into the silver plan, right? So when I present the plan, after I've gone through all of this, now I want to make it personal first before I show them anything else, and I want to click on the beneficiary and say, hey, now if something happens to both of you in an accident, God forbid, who do you want to get $195,000, right? Now it becomes personal. So let's say it's going to go to Judith, right? Judith's going to get $195,000 if both of you die in an accident. And now I can go to the benefits summary because now I'm going to talk about the cost, right? But remember, through that entire process, show you where we're at, we've gone through this script, the final expense protection. We've gone through all of this. Click on the freedom of choice. Tell them what the allocated amounts were. Talked about accidental protection, the hospital benefits, and intensive care, protection of rioters, and finalizing the presentation. All right? And so there's the beneficiary question. And we need to change our tone right here. Because now we're talking, we're making it personal. We're saying, hey, if you were to pass away, 
We don't have any choice or control over it, but you need to take care of yourself or that burden is going to be passed on, right? The whole idea of not leaving a liability, but leaving a legacy for your family. Then you ask the beneficiary question, then you put their name in it, and now you're going to ask, is it going to fit into your budget? Because you're going to say, some veterans get super excited and they want to set aside more. That's the enhanced program. You're going to click on the gold and you're going to show them for a little bit more money, you're going to get $339,000 of total coverage as opposed to 195. And then the closing question is, do you want to do like most of the veterans do and go with the recommended? Do you want to try qualifying for the enhanced? At any time, David Carr, do I show the bronze option? Not until um, you've set a budget with them. And if it's below, or what is it? If it's above the bronze or below the bronze, you right. show the bronze. Let's role play that real quick. Okay. So, hey, uh, David, some veterans get super excited and ask if they can set aside more. And that's going to be the enhanced program, as you can see right here. So that's just contributing $16 a day for both you and your wife. You get $339,000 of total coverage, and anything happens to the both of you, as opposed to just $195. So you want to go with what most of the veterans choose, which is the recommended program by the VSOs, or did you want to try to qualify for the enhanced program? This one right here. I just don't think we could swing $300 a month as a family. Okay. No, no. Hey, I completely understand. That's exactly why I'm here. What makes sense for you and your family? I mean, if we could get to the to the 150 range a month, I think we could swing that and be easy with it. Okay, no worries. Well, let me show you what the VSOs recommend as an entry level. And then you're going to pivot to the bronze program right? Because it's higher than the 150 that he talked about. There's no point in trying to go lower just yet. You want to try to overcome the pricing objection. He's saying the 304 is way too much. He wants to go to 150. We then pivot to the bronze program. So let's do it a little bit differently. David, A, uh, as you can see, they get a lot more coverage for a little bit more money. Uh, do you want to go with and do like most veterans do and go with the recommended program, or do you want to see if you can qualify for the enhanced program? So did you want me to do the, go the same yeah, route? Yeah, David's going to say that $304 is too yeah, much. $304 is a little bit too much for us to say. Hey, David, that's exactly why I'm here. Totally understand. What makes sense for you and your family? If we could get closer to $150, it would be helpful for us. Well, we did that already. So the whole point was for okay, us not to two hundred. All right, so 200. Okay, so Samantha, Samantha, Samantha. I, well, I know who Sam is. I know who Samantha is. So let's go with Samantha. <laughs> Samantha, he told me $200. What do I do now? So you go back to the plan generator. Well, what's the first thing that I do? What? Okay, so he told you 200. So do you like tell him, like, don't worry about it? You go through the script? <laughs> so we're close the first thing we have to do is freeze and pause our screen share right because we don't want to see the stuff behind the screen or the curtain right? right so i'm not gonna do it here but assume i'm gonna freeze my screen yes you're right at that point i'm gonna go to the plan generator and when i'm in the plan generator i know i want to fix the bronze and make it 200 instead of 182.52 okay so I'm going to click on the bronze to make sure that it's being displayed correctly. And the first thing I'm going to do now is what, Samantha? Um, you're going to, wait, you're going to move that? I thought you just moved the, the daily prices. I meant the MBD. No, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to the next highest level that it was at. Go to the triple family. And now I know I'm at 187, which means I have $13, right, mm -hmm. to play with. I'm going to add that $13 somewhere in here, correct? Because mm -hmm. I want to get to $200 a day. So let's say I add 13 all into him. So that would be what, 107? Is that right? 107 gets us to $200.32. Mm -hmm. 
So I probably want to make it just under the $200, so make it 106. Remember, I don't care about this up here anymore because now I have a budget that's set. Yes, David. If what, what's the purpose of showing the bronze plan on the first get? Why wouldn't we just not show that until we need it? Because uh, <laughs> because you want to be able to go there immediately if someone gives you a budget less than the one eighty seven, right? That's why it's there. If it were me and I'm doing this without training and just doing it by myself, because I've done this for a long period of time, I would probably only do an option close and I would only give them option A or option B. I'd have to have them convince me that they should go lower than $304. That, that's just me because of the way that I've been doing this for a long time. But when we talk to new hires, what we've learned is that new hires get really nervous about trying to manipulate a number to meet a budget. If that's the case, you've got the bronze plan already set up and ready to go, okay? But in this case, we know it's $200. We know we're there. We make the quick changes to it. And now I can go to, uh, actually, what's the other thing I need to do, Michelle Lane? What have I not done that I need to do? Uh, well, I didn't think that you allocated though, again, after oh, you- you're right. I do uh, not need to allocate. Right. So, honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it's the name of the plan. Oh, Remember yeah, yeah. To put their name. Yeah. Exactly. So, I click on plan options, and I say that this, instead of bronze, is the David plan. So, right. he owns this. And you have a question. Go ahead, Michelle. I did have a question, too. Yeah. So, when you're putting in, changing the MBD, the monthly bank draft, um, you just did it in the top one for, let's say, John, but that's yeah. only going to be giving him more coverage, right? So if you wanted right. to split it up, you would put it and like make it even between the two people, correct? Yeah, or however you yeah. want to do it. But keep in mind, by the yeah. time you're here, you'll know who either makes the most money in the family and or has coverage so okay. that you it and say, hey, you know what, Mary, uh, John makes the most money. So if he dies, his income dies with him. We want to make sure that you still have enough. So we're going to put the coverage into him. Okay. All right. Uh, Nick, did you have a question? Uh, no, I was just raising my hand to answer when you asked earlier. Gotcha. So now we're here. Remember, we don't care about the analysis approach anymore. So now I can come up. Do I want to go to present plan or do I want to go to benefit summary? Samantha, which one do I want to go to? Benefit summary? Yeah, benefit summary, because I already did the plan and everything, right? And now I just want to show them the difference. Hey, David, glad you told me that. Look what I was able to do for you. I was able to get you $199.32 below your $200 mark. And I was able to increase this, right? But the most important thing in this process is that number right there, because that's the one everybody remembers. So, Samantha, if I did not increase this to triple and it was double, this number would be lower, correct? Correct? Yes. Why? Um, Look at the screen. Look at what I'm circling right here. Remember that these, these three numbers, the accident, auto accident, common carrier, are predicated on this number right here, the triple. So to show you what I mean, 164 is where we're at. If I didn't make that change to the uh, A71 on David, if I kept that at uh, double, instead of at triple, oops, double family, right? What ends up happening is I can say 194, let's see, I'll add another $5 just to make it close, right? Uh, $5 would be what, 111? Yeah, 199.44. Now, if I went to the benefit summary, instead of having that number at 164 it's now 125 because the way this is calculated it's taking the any cause of death and the auto accident 
So the auto accident is now lower. You see that? That's why I want you to make the change to the A71 because the number that people remember is the big bold red number in terms of how much they're getting. Are you tracking with me, Samantha? Yes, I see the bigger picture, but going into detail. So what's your question? Oh, no, you answered it. Um, I was okay. just wondering why you changed it to um, triple family. Okay, yeah, we do that. Now you, I recommend that everybody does that because I want to make sure this number stays as high as possible. If you don't do it, then you're going to show disparity. And the moment you show disparity, even if you meet somebody's budget, what will they do? They'll typically think, well, I'm not getting as much value for my money. So if I'm not going to spend that much, they will usually go down or they won't buy. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we're here. We've gone through all of that stuff. We now know where we're at. Have we gone through the entire presentation now? Brent, have we gone through the entire presentation? Uh, I think so, right? Sure. No, yeah. Well, the presentation, yeah, you just have to go on to EF. Yep. Now we just go on to EF once we've gotten to this point because now we know what the plan is. We know how much money they want to spend. And then we do the EF, which we're going to do either on Tuesday, either tomorrow or Wednesday. We're going to go through EF. Okay. So that was the entire uh thing. We talked about the read-off letter, pre-qualify, why we're talking about insurance, what's being provided. I talked a little bit about emotional statement, right? You need to change the way that you speak at that point because you want to make sure they understand it's serious and they need to look at it. We're talking about the freedom of choice, how much is allocated. We didn't do the accidental death benefit, but we did the A7-1. The reason I put ADB in here is if you do not have your A7-1 license or otherwise known as your accidental and health license, you could offer an accidental death benefit. So everybody remember me talking about that? So let me show it to you really quick. If I'm here and in the plan generator, the A71 is not an option for me because I don't have my license. HP Pro knows that and it won't allow you to sell that. So you don't have it as an option. You can come down here and add an accidental death benefit in here and you can move that. The highest you can put it is at $200,000, which is $20.84, right? And if I did the same thing with Mary at 200,000, now what happens when I go to my benefit summary, you'll see that there's nothing up here for the hospital benefits, but there is something here. So that value does look better. However, all of us need to make sure we get our A71 because all of your uplines have been instructed to get their A71 licenses. Yes, Michelle, what can I do for you? Yeah, stay on that screen right there. I just want to get clarification again that the big red number, where are all, what all is that adding up to? Sure. Where do those numbers include? It includes the any cause of death for both John and Mary. Okay. As well as the auto accident. So 200, 400, 423, 445, 187. Okay, but not the common carrier. So two, four. That's correct. Because okay. The majority of way people die in accidents are through auto accidents. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Awesome. So now we've gone through the entire presentation, all the various steps. We did the A1 through A5 practice. We sent a video to me. The rest of the A section is really reading a lot. And then we start in the B, it's about manipulating and moving things through, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a quick break because after the break, we're gonna go into breakout rooms and we're gonna actually practice doing this, okay? Uh-oh, Kayla, I saw that look. What's that mean? Now I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the word you were excited so we're going to break out rooms um uh, if you try to do this only from your uh pre your pre-plan you cannot present a plan you can only present the beneficiary summary right or the benefit summary so you need to start at the beginning create the demo go through that process you don't need to do any of section a you will be required to do section b all the way through and i'll put about two or three of you two 
two or three of you in each room so that everybody will have time to practice at least twice. Yes, Kelsey. So is A71 different than just the producer's license? Yes. So, so to be clear, you have a life insurance license, and then you also have an uh, accidental and health license. Now, in some states, when you apply for the producer license, you get all three. I think Texas is an example. California needs uh, multiple licenses, needs two. So depending on what your state residency is, will determine whether or not you uh, have to get, how many licenses you need to get. But for okay. most people, they only got the life insurance license. And now we're telling everyone to recruit that you have to get both. Got it. Okay. Do I have any questions before we take a 10 minute break? Oh, yes, you have a question, Alan. Yeah, I've had a life license for 37 years, but never had a health license. So now I have to get the health license. Yeah, so. it's really straightforward for you. It'll be a piece of cake. Uh, I think, what state can, are you in? It? But I can sell, I can sell in the meantime. I don't have to, because Florida is so far behind right now. It'll take me four to yeah. six weeks to get the health license at least. Yeah, so for you, you can sell absolutely with the life insurance uh, only. You're just going to have to, either use the ADB or not offer anything other than the life insurance as a product. Okay, no problem. And, I, and there are people who are successful doing just that. And then for you, because of your experience, you're probably going to get more than just veteran leads. I'm sure Troy's got a plan for you with POS and some of these other ones. They don't require the A71 license because we typically don't offer that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, anybody have any questions, we'll, we'll come back. I will give you until five minutes to the hour. All right, we'll see you in about 13 minutes. Thanks, everybody. We got, we got Michelle, Nick, Art, David, Page, uh, Aurora, Daniel, Allen, Nakia. Yeah, I actually got it right without thinking about it this time. Maricela, Adam, Johnny, Aubrey, Ephraim. Ephraim's not back yet. Samantha, <clears throat> Marvin, Bree, Kelsey, Kayla, Jordan, Samantha. Let's get everybody back. Michael Connor is in the house. Michael Connor, can you hear me? There he is. Hello. I was just popping in. I was checking attendance, wanted to just see which smiling faces were here. Uh, <laughs> Sam, you're incredible. I appreciate you. I was, I was worried. I was like, where is everybody all? You guys, I was figuring you're on break, but it's good to see you guys. Hello. Just wanted to listen in for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. We're about to jump into breakout rooms for section B, C, and D practice. So that's where we're going on. Uh, I know I got some people who are at work, and so you're not going to be able to participate, but maybe you can role play. <laughs> and so okay. let's see. Did anybody notice I'm sitting in the Oval Office? You know, I did notice that, Alan, and I was going to ask you about that later, but hey, I'm <laughs> glad you were able to get space that most of us are unable to obtain. Yeah, yeah. Biden took a nap, so I, I was able to get in. <laughs> he took a nap. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I got everybody here. Carlos, are you with us or are you working, Carlos? Carlos. I am here, um, but for some reason, my camera does not work in the main room. But when we go into breakout rooms, it'll turn on. I'm not sure why, but. That's really weird. But okay, yeah. we're going to practice. Does anybody have any questions for me before you all begin to practice? I have a question. Um, my HP says I'm yeah. locked out for 15 minutes. Did I miss like or something? You attempted to log in incorrectly too many times. So oh. just wait the 15 minutes and then you'll be okay. able to log in with the correct password and login name. Gotcha. So you just be the person who's going to role play first as opposed to the person who's going to present. So everyone knows the expectation is you're going to go into the breakout room. One of you is going to start in section B all the way through until the end. Uh, yeah, Ari, uh, Ari, Arel. Yeah, if you can just listen in, that would be great. Uh, does everybody know how to get me if you have a question or a concern or a problem? Does anybody not know how to get a hold of me? Alan, so down at the bottom where it says reactions, 
on your Zoom, if you click on that, it will have uh, raise hand. When you're in the breakout rooms, you can then request that I join you. So no matter where I'm at, I'll get that message and I can jump in that room and help out. Okay. Thank you. So we're expecting everybody to go from section B all the way through to the end. Whoever's role playing, uh, just role play like you normally would, right? If you're a person that uh, has observed a number of presentations, you know some of the objections people have, bring that to the forefront, have that type of conversation. I'm not looking for the PDF to be filled out in sections A1 through A8. We're only starting in section B, but you do in fact have to uh, start your HP Pro in the demo in order to be able to do everything I would need you to do. Yes, Brianna, bring it. Um, just to be clear, throughout B1 all the way to the end, our cameras are still off, right? Yeah, your cameras are off. However, uh, you can leave your cameras on here. It doesn't matter here, right? It's yeah. just when you do the presentation in your rubric with a client, you can leave your cameras off so that we don't, that no one here cares that you're reading. We're all in the same boat. Unless it's me, and then I definitely have my camera off because I don't want anyone to see me read. I'm very shy. I'm sure you can all attest to that. Any other questions? Okay, I'm assuming no. So I'm going to open up all the rooms. Just accept it. You all be put in rooms. If I see there's not, or if there's too many in one room and not enough in another, I will move people around. Okay. The rooms are all open. All right. I'm going to play a quick little video because I want you guys to see what Andrew Haskins has to say about the presentation itself. We've talked about it a little bit, but I just want you to hear what he has to say. Performing the presentation is the most important stepping stone to success in our business. In order to teach you how to perform, you have to know what to say. So here's what you need to take away from this module. Number one, the presentation is a performance. That's it. Having a great presentation is the common denominator between everyone that is successful with AO. When we explain the benefits to the client in a clear, simple presentation, that they understand what their needs are and they look to our benefits to be their solution. Over the last 40 years, we've learned that anyone can be successful at AO regardless of their past experience or their personality type. AO sales presentation has been developed by the best salespeople in the company. It's a living, breathing document that continues to be fine-tuned to help you become successful. Performing the presentation word for word, it's not a suggestion. It is an expectation. The presentation script has been written to help you enroll more of your presentations while also ensuring that the client, the company, and you are compliant with your explanation of our products. So how do you master the presentation? Well, it's practice, practice, practice. Have you ever read a story so many times that you know every part of it before you even turn the page? Well, of course, we all have. And reading the script out loud is a key to having a great presentation. When you read the script out loud, you'll learn the script in two different ways. Not only do you learn the words by reading, but you also learn the words by hearing yourself say them. On top of all of that, you will learn your presentation even faster. Because in your training, you will get to hear and see your trainer present the same presentation over and over and over again until you are ready to present to our clients. So let's get started with an example that will make sense to you. Your presentation needs to be a performance. Remember, it's called a presentation, not a lecture. That's because the client needs to have ups and downs to stay engaged. Your focus as the presenter is to perform the words that were written. We're not saying that you have to be a robot. We want you to be you. We have found that knowing what you will say versus having to think about what to say is what allows you to perform. So when you are presenting, you need to make it your own without changing any of the words. Let me give you an example. At school, sporting events, and concerts in the U.S. and Canada, it's a tradition to start with, you guessed it, the national anthem. All of us know our national anthem because we have heard it so many times. So what separates a great version of the national anthem from one that's an absolute disaster? Well, it's the artist's performance. The artist doesn't have to change the words to make it great. 
They just perform. Each one of the artists performs the words of the anthem in their own style to make it their own. The words are all the same, in the same order, and what sets them apart is how they sing it. The same goes for your presentation. Let's take a look at this in action. Now that you know that your success is going to come down to how you perform the words of the presentation, let me teach you how to have a great performance. First, you need to set your computer up in a place where the internet's the fastest, where there's a good lighting source and is away from as many distractions as possible. Next, sit in a chair that helps you to have good posture. This will allow you to project your voice during your presentation. Be loud. As you're learning how to best communicate virtually, being loud will project confidence to the client. Talk slowly and clearly. Remember, this is the first time that they've heard the presentation. You want to use voice inflection. Changing your tone of voice and the speed your reading will emphasize the important points of the presentation, and this will keep the client engaged. Be emotionally appropriate. That means that when you are talking about them or their loved one passing away, talk more quietly and compassionately. An easy way to think of this is to use the same voice that you would use if you were talking to someone who's sitting on the first row of a funeral. Use plan pauses. This will ensure your words have the intended impact by letting them set in before moving to the next sentence. And lastly, when you ask a question, make sure to get a verbal answer. Head nods, they're not enough. You're asking questions to ensure they understand what you just talked about and that they are with you. So you're probably thinking the same question that I had when I first started. When will I be ready to present to clients? That's simple. You'll get the chance to be on presentations with your trainer until you are ready to present on your own. When you're not watching your trainer present, you need to be practicing and saying your presentation out loud until you can say the presentation word for word using everything you've learned in this training. And so don't worry, as long as you are saying the words in the presentation the best that you can, your presentation will get better and better and better. The more repetitions that you get, the better you will get and the sooner you will master the presentation. Now, be sure to watch this video as many times as you need to solidify what you've learned and get the most out of your training. So there you go, right? <clears throat> the presentation is actually a performance. So you decide how you want that performance to go. The little subtleties that you interject are going to be perfectly fine. However, when you start off as a uh, new agent, you want to make sure you stick to the script as much as possible. So that way, if you run into any difficulties, any problems, your upline or even myself can help you address any issues that you have, right? Does anybody have any questions on how to perform the presentation? Okay, no questions. That's great. What is the homework that we have for tonight, Michelle Lane? You're killing me today. <laughs> okay, no worries. Dante, what is the homework that we have for tonight? We are sending our presentation to our uplink for upline entirely. That's off the top, but I have it over here. If I do look, if I do choose to cheat, <laughs> I could. Tuesday says. No, you're looking at Monday. Presentation graded and graded rubric emailed to course facilitator by the trainee. I so think I was right. On page 21, right? It says the assignment oh, Monday. Sorry. Prepare and present the entire presentation to the manager. So the only thing we want you to focus on in terms of homework for me is practicing the presentation and scheduling a time with your upline when you're actually going to do the presentation rubric. 
Does everybody remember what the presentation rubric is? Or do I need to go through it with anybody? Reminder. A reminder. Sure, absolutely. Anybody want to stick around, you can. I will show you the presentation rubric and tell you how I would grade and things of that nature to help everybody out. Okay, so please stick around for that if you want to. Other than that, if you don't have any other questions, uh, I appreciate your time today. I appreciate the fact that you practice. Thanks for coming back <laughs> after spending a week away, either in the bad weather or the holidays or whatever. I will see you all tomorrow. At what time? I will see you all tomorrow at 9 a.m.